I grew up in Africa and always believed that crocodiles and people don't mix. I thought crocs to be cold, instinctive creatures. But now I believe that this image is far from the truth. When you witness the relationship between this crocodile and this man, it will challenge everything you think you know about crocodiles and the natural world itself. My journey of belief starts here in southern Africa on a boat in the Okavango Delta. My name is Roger Horrocks and I was one of the first people to dive underwater with Nile crocodiles. Our expedition led us into a cave system we call the Dragon's Lair. This is the place where Nile crocodiles up to five meters long drag their prey. Our guide was veteran riverman, Greg Thompson. The scary thing with crocodiles is they one of the only animals that consider people as food. Underwater, we had an experience that challenged all that. We had an encounter with an animal that was just unlike anything we had experienced before. It allowed us to be so close. Why was this animal not showing any aggression? Why did it allow us to be with it for hours. These intimate moments revealed an aspect of crocodile nature I had not thought possible. It felt as though the crocodile had invited us into its lair, as if enjoying our presence. And I started thinking, would it be possible for a crocodile to form a bond with a human, an animal we've always thought incapable of feelings? The thinking on crocodiles is that they're not capable of emotions such as love and affection and loyalty, etc. They have a very, an ancient brain. So generally scientists would say that, you know, they're basically motivated purely by survival and by food or protection. It was strange, and sometimes I think I simply imagined the whole encounter. But ever since then, I've been obsessed by this question. Can a croc understand and share the feelings of a human? In my search for an answer, I stumbled across what seemed an unbelievable story about a thousand pound crocodile who is supposed to live in harmony with a man. This man and this crocodile are said to live in Costa Rica. I had to investigate. Coming to Costa Rica, there's just this real sense of almost going back in time into a kind of prehistoric world. It has massive amounts of tropical rainforest and it's bordered by two oceans. It is also the perfect home for the American crocodile. Some say American crocs are a less aggressive species than Nile crocs. It's true the statistics show far fewer attacks than Niles, but like all crocodiles, they are supreme hunters. And in Central America and Costa Rica in particular, they have most definitely attacked and even killed people. My introduction to American crocodiles starts here, at the Tarkalos River. It's the best place in Costa Rica to see American crocs. They are densely packed, 25 crocs per kilometer. I'm looking for a man called Juan Betrayo. He's really well known in these parts because he was actually attacked by a huge crocodile and dragged underwater and managed to escape by digging his fingers in its eyes. And strangely for a man who, who's had this near death experience with a crocodile, instead of, of, of that driving him away, it's actually drawn him to these animals and he's doing something quite remarkable. Juan is now calling a big aggressive crocodile called Tyson. It was actually Tyson that caught Juan 
and dragged him under, and he's got huge scars all over his stomach that he wouldn't allow me to photograph. He doesn't want to portray the crocodiles in a bad light. The situation is really dangerous. que que pues todos los cocodrilos no son no son tan agresivos como a veces parecen entonces para darles a entender a la gente que hay que cuidarlos que hay que conservarlos y que no son como como a veces eh, se cree que que devoran todo y todo esto entonces es para un poco más de concientización a la, a las personas que que no hay que tenerles tanto miedo sino que hay que conocerlos watching this it is very clear that these animals are capable of learning there's an intelligence here. And what I, what I find even more remarkable is that they, they are wild animals. In other words, they're living in a you know, wild river, they're not dependent. And yet, he had the, the, the sort of the, you know, the sense to actually reach down and, and touch its nose. I mean, how had he found the courage to take the physical intimacy so far? This is incredible. It clearly says something about the possible relationship between crocs and people. At the very least, challenges the perception of the instinctive attacking croc. But I'm not forgetting that Juan has been dragged under and bitten. It's hard to imagine more intimacy with a croc. But Juan keeps telling me about Tarzan Chito He's the man I heard about, who's supposed to swim with a huge croc. Juan told me to travel to the East Coast and find a girl, Jocelyn Aguera. She could introduce me to Chito. I caught a taxi across the width of Costa Rica to the town of Sequires, where I managed to track down Jocelyn Aguero. She'd been attacked by a crocodile and saved out of its jaws by Chito. Luego yo, bueno, cuando ya yo yo ya sentí que ya yo no aguantaba más, entonces yo dije que ya que sea la mano de Dios. Y bueno, y ya y eso me sacó, Chito estaba ahí nada, este pescando. Y él me, me sacó, se dio un bombazo y seguramente al sentir que... Jocelyn led me to where Chito lived. I was really excited to finally meet Chito. But he hardly came across as the Tarzan that he'd been made out to be. He was a far more gentle, calmer person. I'd been expecting a tougher, macho guy. Chito led me down to the water to meet the crocodile he calls Pocho. I felt a bit nervous, but I could immediately sense that Cheeto was not afraid. The crocodile seemed to be responding to his voice. I just can't imagine him actually getting into the water with this animal. You see the face? The yeah, eyes? he's happy. He's eyes. looking. See it? When you see the eyes, eyes open. probably yeah. it's a little yeah. something happens, but he's really happy with me. The eyes. Yeah. Pocho is a monster, at least 16 foot long with a massive girth. How 
had Cheeto penetrated the forbidden boundary and joined a giant crocodile in the water? It seemed impossible, but here it was in front of me. His life story is like something out of a fantasy book, not unlike Tarzan. It all started 23 years ago, when Cheetah found a crocodile that had been shot by a farmer for attacking his livestock. With incredible and almost inhuman patience, Cheetah nurtured this crocodile back to life, sometimes chewing fish in order to encourage the crocodile to eat. It took him three years to get the crocodile back to full health. And after that, because it grew so quickly, he named it Pocho, which means a big, strong, handsome guy. He claimed that during this period of care and recuperation, a really strong bond started to develop between the two of them. Something which my research had told me was highly unlikely. I think he don't want to make me ne never hurt me because we have a 20 years together. And maybe we would have a problem in three years, two years, and now it's 20 years and nothing. As far as I know, no human has ever swum and touched a huge crocodile in the water and not been attacked. What Pocho is allowing has probably never been seen before in the history of the human animal world. Yeah, meeting Cheetah is just like, my strongest impression was almost it's like meeting a kind of modern day shaman. He, he clearly has a very, very strong affinity with nature and he spent a huge amount of time in nature as well. And that passion, that commitment is very, very evident. As a child, Cheeto used to find injured wild animals and nurture them and release them back into the wild. The more I spend time with Cheeto, the more I realize that he has this incredible sensitivity to animals and wilderness. Could it be that the sensitivity gives him the edge? Is it this that gives him the ability to interact with Pacha? I'm really hoping that I can tap into this and develop this understanding in myself, get a better understanding of this mystery. Cheeto was determined to take me deep into the jungle, to a place that is very special to him and Pacho. Okay, when Pacho comes here, you see the same like a hole? The incredible thing is that once Pacho actually regained his bulk and he started recovering, um, word got out that Cheeto had this animal and of course he didn't have a license for it so the police came to try and take it away from him and he brought it to this area um, there's a beautiful little pond over there which is very hidden and basically when the police did come he would come and stay here and he'd live inside here so he could be very close to, to Pocho um, and then applied for papers and then once he got the papers he then felt safe to take Pocho back. My first wife, um, she left me because I spent so many hours here, so many days with ponchos, so she thinks I'm crazy. How I want to be so many days with animals and the skinny animal. What the hell are you doing with that skinny animal, she say. And I'm here to save pocho because somebody want to take pocho, so I have to bring him here and spend my, my time here. So my first wife don't like it. She say I'm crazy, so she go. 
was a lot of bats. Oh. And I, this was like, like my... my Chito lived in this tree for weeks on end, putting up with the bats and the mosquitoes. And this is where he really lived up to his nickname of Tarzan Chito. I like my wife and I, and I love her. But I can't get, I think, I can't get another poncho. But I can't get another wife. But I can't get another poncho. Because it's one in a million. And that was like a, like a God give me a bless with Pocho. Now Chito is happily married to his second wife and they have a young daughter called Shakira. No, nunca, porque Pocho es como un hijo para nosotros y uno nunca se sentiría celoso de un hijo hacia un padre. Son cariños diferentes. His family were initially very concerned that the crocodile would eat him. So Cheeto had to sneak out in the middle of the night to be with his beloved crocodile. Cheeto's wife, Olga, thought he was actually out drinking with his buddies. But she became suspicious when he kept coming home with his clothes wet. Pero le seguí preguntando y preguntando y me di cuenta que era que estaba con el cocodrilo adentro. Yo me entrego totalmente a Pocho, el sentimiento mío. I give myself totally to Pocho. The feeling I have is like when I go to sleep. I feel very calm. When the night comes, I feel at peace in the natural world with Pocho. Full moon is the height of our coming together. It's when crocodiles are most alert because all the other animals are very active. It's the hunting time. His worst time is when it thunders. He gets out of the water. I think he knows the lightning is dangerous. games we taught each other started at night. The death roll other crocs used to rip chunks of meat from prey became one of our first games. It was then I realized he could learn and remember. Pocho is so clever. This time at night, for me, it's like being with God. Chito just seems to have crossed what I think many people would just see as an impossible boundary. Crocodiles are, are really aggressive at night. It's, it's when they hunt. And yet he somehow seems to have turned this to his advantage and actually used it to build intimacy with this animal. I'm just getting such a strong sense that they are actually capable of emotion more than we would have you know, ever imagined. Like, I feel like an animal, so they feel me like a brother, like something. But if I don't feel like an animal, I can't go close to them because I feel they want to think I'm a people and I want to hurt them. Once Pocho was big and healthy again, Cheeto released him into a nearby river system. Waking up the next morning, Cheeto couldn't believe his eyes. There was Pocho sleeping on his veranda. After that, he tried releasing him a few times again, but the same thing happened. And so Pocho became part of the family, his daughter Shakira growing up around this huge animal.
A mí me gustaría ir a la laguna y jugar con Pocho, pero mis papás no me dejan. When you when you look at this, it's very easy to quite quickly take it for granted. And I don't know of anyone else who has as intimate a relationship as Cheeto does with, with, with the reptile. But in the research that I've done, there have been people who've had relationships with reptiles for you know up to 10 years and everything's fine and all of a sudden they get eaten. And I think you've just got to realize that every time he gets into the water, he's, he's running a significant risk. Relax, man, relax, sleep a little bit, relax, enjoy. Cuando yo estoy hablando con la gente, when I'm alone with Pocho, I feel like an animal. I feel crocodile. Often I think back to his injury, how we had to heal it. I feel completely connected to Pocho. I am part of the nature of this animal. Every animal needs a stimulation. I gave him food when he was dying, but he needed more. He needed my love. In the beginning, I wasn't sure of how close I could get. It took me a while to understand the signs he now gives me. I slowly started to touch him and he never tried to bite me. Once he recovered his strength, I was expecting him to go back to the wild. He was free to go, but he decided to stay. That's when the trust grew stronger and I began to move closer to him. Sometimes he would go for me with his mouth open, but just before he bit me, he would stop and close his mouth. I tried to hold him when he began to swim so that he would respect my strength. At first I was scared when he got crazy and threw me off. Then I learned to read his moves. So much of his feelings is in his eyes. When Pocho is anxious, you can see a lot of blinking in his eyes. His eyes say plenty. When he's happy, his eyes are normal. I can tell this because I look at his eyes every day. He loves the touch. He loves me. He also watches my eyes. I communicate through my eyes that I don't want to hurt him. Pocho no no me ve a mí hace rato, entonces yo vengo y tal vez vine de San José cuando vine con ellos vengo y me siento con él ahí y al rato ahí me descanso un rato ahí. El calor de él, yo me siento tranquilo y me acuesto ahí, ahí me ruleo un rato con él. I think the, the one thing that you can't discount is that this animal was shot in the head. So it's not inconceivable that that has somehow modified its behavior. What could have happened is that because of the huge shock to the brain, it has been reprogrammed and the deep nurturing that Cheeto has shown has somehow modified the usual crocodile behavior. At my lightest touch, he now responds. If I try to force him in any way, he just uses his strength. He pushes me out of the way. This touching language took three years to develop. There is another form of communication. You see, crocs can feel a struggling animal from hundreds of meters away. I use the vibration I make with my hands in the water to communicate with him. Now he comes to me, he loves the touch, but he also likes to touch me with his body. Very gently when he's happy and with strength when he's agitated.
We have this routine of movements we have created over the years, like two dancers. We are in a dance. If I forget one of the moves, he doesn't like it. He won't cooperate. That's when I have to go back and do the movement again. Then he does it much better and he's happy again. I never push him. I only try things twice. If he doesn't do it, I leave him. You can't push a thousand pound animal around. When you, when you first see this, you immediately think it's, it's impossible. And then of course you, you start to, you know, as a human being, you try and think of some kind of rational explanation for it. And the first thing that comes to mind, of course, is, is that it's a feeding dependency. But there are periods of time where he doesn't feed the animal for up to three weeks, and yet the animal still comes to him. It still seems to seek out that, that connection and that interaction with him. When I gave him food, I hit him with the fish. So he associates that feeling with biting and eating. When I touch him with my hand, I touch him gently, so that he knows it isn't food and won't bite me. He gets excited when I go in the water. He loves the touch, he loves to play. If I had to go away for a few days, he gets agitated. He waits for me. He doesn't bite me because he respects me. I've been completely seduced by what I think is the true nature of this relationship. But I was about to experience a completely different side to the story. I was suddenly swept up in this musical journey through town, which was actually a way of advertising the show that Cheeto was going to be performing on Sunday. The day I feel afraid, no more, no more show. As I watched all these people arrive and a circus-like mood starting to develop, I just felt really uncomfortable on so many levels. There was all this money changing hands and that leads you to question the motive. You know, it always does. You know, is he looking after this animal because he loves the animal or is he just looking to make money? What I'm seeing today is just very much, it's like very commercial and very, and it's just, it's almost a bit disappointing. The other thing that didn't sit well with me was Cheeto dressing up like Tarzan and doing this whole Tarzan act, because it just seems to trivialize the richness of this relationship that I've had access to. Watching the crowd, it's very clear that they are fascinated by what's going on. What's interesting is their way of making sense of it is simply to write Cheeto off as completely crazy. I thought, I can't believe this. And it's unbelievable. I mean, it, you know, I would never do that. Oh yeah, I mean, that hurts. No. <laughs> when I first saw those pictures of Cheeto, um, I immediately had this fantasy of him as being some kind of noble savage with this incredible connection with this animal that I could learn a great deal from. And when I met him, he, he absolutely lived up to that fantasy on many, many levels. But when I saw that show, I was, I was in, in many ways just devastated because it just challenged my whole fantasy of what I thought Cheeto was and what he represented. And I really struggled with that. I almost, 
almost just wanted to pretend that that wasn't happening. starting to wonder if Pocho would relate to all people like he does to Cheeto. And there's only one way to find out. So Cheeto, are you sure that I can get in and start to get close? What's... Yes, uh, we work a little bit this morning and the crocodile is kind of feel you already. Okay. So don't, don't fray. Okay. Trust me, okay? And trust the crocodile. Okay. When I say you stop a little bit. Okay. But don't, don't, don't run away. Yeah. Because if you run away, the, the, the guy will think you're afraid and he want to follow you. Okay. So you feel um, man, strong mm -hmm. and looking look face every time. Okay. And a very nice smile. The first time I got into the water with Cheeto and Pocho, I was really relying on Cheeto to put himself between me and the crocodile at all times and minimize the risk of an attack. The only other person that got into the water with them had his ribs broken when the animal just lashed out with its tail. I need to be really careful. I'm starting to get a richer picture of the language of the crocodile. When they move their eyes rapidly and they arch their backs, it generally means they're feeling very aggressive or threatened. They're also incredibly sensitive to any form of sound or vibration, and they can pick that up over very large distances. So I need to be very conscious of what I'm doing when I'm in the water. Cheetah also seems to think that they're incredibly sensitive to smell and they build up associations with various things in the environment through smell, through pheromones. But it got quite hairy at times where I could sense that crocodile wanting to come in and I just had to trust his ability to kind of read and manage the situation. Well, I think everything in the natural life move and have, have something they can understand. But you have to have the direct communication, the chemic. So you want to have it. And you, you do it with heart, you feel it. If you don't do something good, you don't want to have nothing. So, pocho no, tranquilo, pocho, pocho. Tomorrow I've decided to put the camera down and get into the water with the animal without Cheeto creating a barrier between me and that animal. I've, I've learned the easy things. I've learned the cues, the arching of the back, the rapid eye movement, the things that you can learn from distant observation. But the critical thing that I need to put into practice and experience is actually trying to influence that animal through my own mental state. And the only way to do that is to actually get in the water and get close to the animal. Yeah. Pucho, pucho, pucho. So, Cheeto, can, 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 the, can the crocodile feel your emotion? I mean, is that yeah. important? Very important. That's the way you feel it. The way it's checking, checking you. Checking you. Yeah. So you can feel. Okay. Very special guy. Yeah. The rain is not so good, but this guy is good, okay? Yeah. So you only trust me. Yeah. Feel, I feel. I trust you. I need you to take off your shirt, you know, because Poncho maybe... 
Cheeto wanted me to take my shirt off because the croc is used to him in the water without his shirt. When Cheeto's working with Pacho, he's constantly talking to him as if he's talking to a human. And what's more important than the words themselves is the actual way they're spoken. I'm really just trying to control my fear. Yeah, I think the risks are the risks. I mean, we weighed up, weighed up the risks, and the risks are fine. As I approached the crocodile and held its tail from behind, he immediately reacted and swam off and started to display very aggressive behavior. He was clearly not happy with my presence in the water. His arched tail in crocodile language indicated he was agitated. And this is interesting because it's, it's clearly the relationship is between the crocodile and cheetah. That's where the trust lies. So it's, that's the basis of this entire relationship. I'd been rejected by this crocodile and I was leaving the next day. I just wanted one more chance to see if I could create some kind of connection. Before I met Cheeto, I would never have considered engaging a 16 foot male crocodile on the surface. As that animal approaches me, I'm constantly running through my mind what Cheeto has taught me. The most critical thing is to just be extremely confident, because without doubt these animals can pick up if you're scared. As Pocho disengaged and swam past, I reached out and touched the dragon. Pocho seemed calm, not reacting to the touch, but then as he came round to circle me again, something changed. He hissed and I felt really threatened. You feel vulnerable. I mean, those teeth coming towards you, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty scary. But in my mind, I had, I, I already had a positive outcome. I was out, so I put my hand on the cola, and he made a touch on the cola, and like that. And there was, and the first shot, sí, que iba a explore, but the second shot, maybe he was like, like not to come and eat it, but like to tell you that he was out of here. No sé, algo así como que él defendiendo su territorio. Pero ya el segundo tiro sí venía. O sea, no lo vi que venía desde que venía allá, ya venía como, como muy, muy mal loco, ¿entiende? Explíquele eso. It's very clear to me that Cheeto and Pocha have a lifelong bond. And for me to form any kind of connection with this animal would take years of hard work. Being in the water with this animal made me realize just how reliant Pocho is on Cheeto. And the problem is that Pocho could easily live to be over 100 years old. So what would happen to the crocodile when Cheeto dies? The plan is that when Shakira gets to 18, she will start to learn the crocodile language 
and slowly take over the care of Pocho. Porque él es parte de mi familia y yo siempre he estado con él y yo lo quiero mucho y lo voy a cuidar cuando esté grande y lo quiero mucho 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 por mucho tiempo lo voy a cuidar mucho mucho. I think what's important here is that there really is a commitment to the lifelong care of this animal. I have shared a great deal with Pocho when we are alone. Things that he has done to me, nobody has seen them. If I have a problem or a difficult situation, I come to him. I speak to him. I feel that he understands me and he answers me back. Like saying, be patient. There is a God that knows things and everything will be all right. relaciones con animales es muy importante para todo el mundo que ellos puedan The relationship with animals is very important for all the world. People don't understand. But people like you who are close to nature get it fast. Other people think I'm crazy. And this is why it's so important for you to be here. Because that way you can tell the world about my relationship and what it means for me as a human to have this friendship with Pocho. Cheeto's relationship with this ancient creature is based on over 20 years of commitment and love. Cheeto has taught me that humans have the potential to form deep bonds with crocodiles. This changes my whole perception of what I once believed to be a cold, instinctive animal. I still have so many questions, but I leave behind perhaps the greatest mystery I have ever seen with the knowledge that the primal connection I felt with a crocodile in those caves in Africa was true. And that's where I thought the story ended. Then a few months later, I heard tragic news from Costa Rica. Pocho the crocodile had suddenly died of natural causes, leaving Cheeto and family distraught. And I wondered in my sadness if the world would ever see a man and a crocodile in love again.